FA lifting the lid on the harsh treatment experienced by young workers in the fast food industry. It shows many are victims of both verbal and physical abuse. And other teenagers said that they were bullied into working long hours on school nights for less than the minimum wage. They're the biggest employers of kids in this country. Just being here makes me feel uncalm. Eight out of ten Aussie teenagers cut their employment teeth, flipping burgers, frying fries and scrubbing floors. It's a pubescent rite of passage. That's why we are trying to do what we can. They're vulnerable, aren't they? They, they are potentially vulnerable. For many of them, it is their first uh, experience, their first taste of working life. Across the board, in the fast food industry, one in three young workers experience workplace violence and bullying. When Zana, by the way, publicly released this Victorian employee advocacy survey today, it rang alarm bells for parents across the country. A finger being cut off at the tip, a band-aid is applied. Serious burns, water is simply run over the wound. Granted that these are extreme examples, we randomly selected three case studies. It lowers your self-esteem because they're always telling you that you can't keep up with them, you're, like, you're no good at it. With Mum Leah's support, oh, well, Callan Bishop, then 15, just... went to work at Burger King, yeah, back then. part of the massive Hungry Jack's chain. Once, one time, the deep fryer broke down and flooded the floor, so instead of waiting till the next morning, just coming in early, they made me and another guy stay back and scrub the floors till 2 in the morning when we were meant to finish at 11. And this was on a school day? Yeah, on a school night. Yep. Jenna Casey couldn't actually wait to tell her employers where to shove the job. I really wanted it to end. I'd count down the hours until I'd finished. So After two weeks of personal humiliation at a local pizza place around the corner, Jenna's mum, Julie, finally called it quits. She was also losing her hair. Not losing her hair? Through stress, because, excuse me, because of the way he carried on and he wouldn't pay. She wasn't eating, she wasn't sleeping, so... That's what really made me angry to think he could do that to her. And it was her first job. The worst perpetrators, unfortunately, are people in positions of power, such as managers and supervisors. And our last example, Jonathan Nixon, says he was burnt by another of the biggies, KFC. We had to lift up the pots and stuff, and if you got steam burns, they didn't really care. It was an exhausted, disillusioned Jonathan who finally deserted the colonel after three months in the service. It was demoralising. I didn't feel have a good self-esteem. I felt low. After coming home, I'd come home covered in chicken and oil for $5.25. After working there for three months, I only made $300. When I started work there, four out of, one of the older employees told me that four out of five people would drop out from working there because of the money and conditions. If they do stand up for their rights, remember most of these are casual staff, so they can be sacked without any valid reason whatsoever. This is a process that has deliberately sought out people who are wanting, who are keen to make some form of complaint. Safe, David Gregory is the mouthpiece for the big kahuna burgers in the industry. It was sent to an audience that was more than likely to complain. Are and you saying, saying these aren't legitimate complaints? No, we're saying that it needs to be put in perspective. In Victoria alone, fast food employs 60,000 young people. 600 responded to the Job Watch survey. So to suggest a systemic culture of exploitation would be reading too much into the report. But it has caught Victorian Attorney General Rob Hull's eye. But 68% of kids who had been harassed or intimidated or bullied in the workplace were too frightened to report it. It was his government that prosecuted a KFC operator when a young man was horrifically burnt in a deep fryer accident. The victim's compensation came wrapped in the nickname Kentucky Fried Danny. Look, if employers break the law, they can expect the full force of the law to be visited upon them. We are talking about serious issues if uh, we're talking about the health and safety of young people. As I say, these are not obligations that we are trying to avoid. Obligation. Now, there's a word that cuts both ways. Did you feel that you, you were obligated, that you had, to, you had to do these things? Yeah. Right? Otherwise, I wouldn't get another shift the next week. That's how they did it, was it? Yeah, if you did something wrong, look, well, they rang you and asked you if you wanted to do a shift, and you said no. Wouldn't get a shift next week. 
So it's that kind of standover tactic. Yeah, I will come on. A fair go. We dispute one uh, that it's a standover tactic, uh, and secondly, the, the kids, there, yeah. every every child I've spoken to so far reports this. Well, so. I'm saying you're not speaking to a representative cross section. Maybe we are. Chris Hill with that report. After break.